Hello, it's me, Nathan Pearson. Um, this will be my second blog post. And I will be talking to you this time about something which I think is pretty cool. Uh, I'd like to think that you agree with that too. Uh, just a little bit of word of advice. Before you go and put a cotton bud down your ear to clean it out, don't. It's the first time I've ever tried it, and right now, uh, I did it about four days ago, and I've not been in so much pain uh, for years, and it's all because I managed to push some... Uh, wax down my ear with said cotton bud and I'm just giving you a heads up, don't go there. So today I am choosing to blog about something which I think is very important, something which is pretty cool and the topic of today's blog is how do you take an idea and make it into a saleable product. I'm going to break this down into four steps. There's probably a lot more involved than that, but uh, this is for you to go out there and work upon. So, as with any good idea or any invention, you usually find they comes across when you need something and you can't find it anywhere. In a shop, on the internet, um, on Google, on Amazon, just not there. And you're brave enough to think, do you know what, if I need it, potentially there's other people out there who might as well. As with most good ideas, they usually start on a napkin. Unfortunately, the napkin that I drew my invention on which, by the way, is called the Romeo Shelf. Uh, I think you'll still find it on Amazon, although I stopped selling them in about 2012 uh, for reasons that I'll go into in another blog. But regardless, the product Romeo Shelf created, created its own category of products on the internet. Its own products. And now, there must be the best part of maybe 30, 40 different derivatives of something which I created on the back of a napkin. And it originally looked a little bit like this. Give me a second. I'm going to, I'm going to draw it out. By the way, this is my trusty notepad. I take it absolutely everywhere with me. There's a nice little blank page there. And... I'll draw you what originally I had in mind. So, as I draw it out, I used to live in a lovely apartment which overlooked the race course in Chester. Um, me and my wife and my first child, uh, it was the first house that I bought. And when we moved in, we used to look over the race course. Uh, we used to have some Juliet balcony doors, which you can imagine you open up, open up, have a look outside, and a beautiful view of the Chester race course. The only problem was, because it was a little block of uh, what could be described as space between us falling out of the balcony doors, and the ground below. Um, we were very limited on space, so anybody who's watching the races or talking, gets fresh air at the balcony doors, didn't have anywhere to put drinks or snacks or um, mobile phones, things like that. No one had any space for anything. Everything was on the floor. Consequently, one night, a bottle of red wine went down, on the floor, um, I'll put a link actually um, on this video to uh, the uh, 
to a video which shows the product in action and, and the reasons why behind it, it was invented. Uh, so, step one, draw your idea. don't know if you can see that right now. That is how the Romeo shell began. And from there, I told my wife that I couldn't find anything like it on the internet. And uh, do you know what? I think I'll just make my own. And because of that, I went to um, a metal worker who lived 20 minutes away from my house. And I said to him, I've got this idea. Uh, you can see my design on this napkin. Can you make me some brackets? And he did. And I've actually got the original first Romeo shelf prototype here now. Give me one moment. So I'm going to give it out to show you. As ugly as it is, it's here. And as you can see, uh, with some simple refinements, look at that. It was literally put together with plastic, metal, and bits and pieces that I found in local hardware stores. But, guess what? It served its purpose. And because it served its purpose, I managed to convince um, a fellow entrepreneur to get involved uh, in the project. This was the first time that um, I had reached out to anybody uh, for help and assistance um, in my business ventures. I think I was probably around about 21 at the time. Uh, I, don't, I don't even think I knew what an entrepreneur was at the time. Um, but I did some research and learned that step two was work or collaborate with like-minded individuals. And fortunately for me, the like-minded individual was an entrepreneur. He had lots of uh, different businesses, and one of them included a um, metal engineering factory, um, and also he had involvement with um, balustrades and other Juliet-related items. And whether it was coincidence or whether it was just simply luck, um, I always challenge luck because it's not lucky that the man who plays on the golf course for 40 years is often better than the person who tries it for the first time. So persistence pays. So that was my step two. Work or collaborate with other people who have a similar mindset and a new set of skills bring to the table. So in between me contacting him and having a chat and discussing what we could do next, I refined my invention a little bit further and it looked a little bit like this. I can't believe we've still kept hold of these. Uh, and underneath we had some grips uh, so he wouldn't damage the paintwork, which was feedback. And I took it to a friend's house. Um, also, the shelf was a little bit narrower with a curved lip so nothing would fall off. And there we are. Uh, that was Romeo shelf prototype 2. After that point, a lot uh, of work went into further refining the product and it actually transpired that the, 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 the final product uh, looked nothing like how it had originally begun and we ended up with something which looked a little bit like this. Yep, 
I say. It looked nothing like how it begun. But what it did solve was the problem that we could close the doors when the shelf was dropped down. Uh, and if you look at this, this is a feat of engineering. But that came with collaboration. Step three was what to do in, in, in the meantime. And I spent a lot of time contacting um, uh, furniture stores, um, outdoor centres. And basically, I, I, I created a list of people who were likely to buy my product, whether it be consumers or whether it be businesses in bulk quantities. Um, I went to town finding my key customer, and it wasn't just somebody with a garden or somebody who had an interest in um, new inventions. I really, really, really drilled down and focused on uh, balustrade suppliers because this would be a great retrofit item. Uh, they were the kind of wholesale people I was looking to introduce myself to. And then also uh, people who had the same problems as me uh, were probably of a, of a similar lifestyle. So could go out at the weekend and make a purchase of 60, 70 pounds um, for a new furniture item. Um, also had a Juliet balcony, that probably helped. Um, and I liked the outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> or at least liked opening up their French doors so they could get some fresh air into their apartment. Um, but as I say, I, I was very sensitive and I really zoned in on who would benefit fr from, from this item. But I didn't stop there because, again, even though we had uh, what could be potentially a finished product, it still wasn't quite there. When I spoke to um, wholesalers... Um, or retailers, the question that I kept getting asked was, um, what's your uh, marketing spend? How much are you spend on uh, branding the product? Um, and, and also, when I show it to friends, I am, as I am doing now really, uh, was struggling to describe exactly what it was that they would be buying. So, I looked out for a creative agency and step four was probably the most important part for me um, because it took what was originally uh, an idea and it became a genuine saleable product. Now I just need to put some of these bits and pieces back and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Give me one moment. Now, please bear in mind that this uh, particular box has been in my um, my garage uh, for <laughs> a couple of years at least. But by employing a good marketing or creative agency, now let me backtrack. I didn't employ. I'll be honest. I didn't employ. I didn't have the money to employ a marketing or creative agency. But what I did have was the entrepreneurial spirit to approach a couple of creative agencies and ask them whether they would work with me on this project because they'd seen how far I'd come from the beginning um, being on the scrap of paper to the um, finished product which I could show them um, being used practically and 
this is what we created. So, we created a brand. It was called the Romeo Shelf, um, which fitted beautifully uh, with a Juliet balcony. You see where we're going there? Uh, the artwork, the photography, uh, everything that came with it just looked it, made it look a real good saleable product. Um, inside, even as far as designing the, uh, the box layout, uh, you'd be happy uh, if you receive that in, in, in the post. Um, they took what was originally an idea, created a brand, created a website, a sales portal, and then leveraged the interest and also gave me the confidence to go and pitch to uh, five millionaire entrepreneurs on BBC primetime TV um, and I didn't get investment but but and, and the most important thing is here the entrepreneurial journey is not always about winning first sometimes it's about having the losses to learn how to play better and I think you can agree with that uh, as you move along your journey for me, what it gained was exposure. I mean, flipping it. The amount of website traffic that we had was phenomenal. The amount of phone calls that I received after the show was beyond comprehension. Um, and the opportunities that it's given me in terms of people wanting to work with me and have confidence that I can fulfil on what I say I'm going to do has just increased um, massively. Uh, so I'm going to include the breakdown of the four points. And I'm sorry if I sound a little bit scatty, uh, but you have the power to go out there and do it. And even if you just absorb one little nugget of information from me which helps you on that journey that's what i'm hoping for so below i've been watching a lot of youtube videos recently below i really like it if you subscribe to my channel and if you do i will be giving you more advice and tips in the future i'm going to list the again the four points which are massively important when you are taking an idea to an invention uh, or a saleable product, I should say, an idea to a saleable product, because an idea which has not been followed through is worthless. And I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, and um, remember. Stay away from here, buds, and keep subscribed so I can give you more tips in the future. Excellent. Thanks.